we're here with Matt Irving, DP, and uh, what is your title at Canon I'm now? a senior technical specialist with Canon now. I hung up my DP hat last year. You want, once a DP, always a DP. That's right, exactly right. Uh, you can never shake it. I just learned, I'm sure you've shot other films, but I just learned he shot Waiting, which I love that movie. That's uh, right. So that's fun. Um, <laughs> but he's going to run us through some of the new cinema advancements. I know uh, the C500, which is, I got serial number eight of that no camera. No kidding. I think I was the first or second person in the U.S. Amazing. to get it. Uh, <laughs> just has a new firmware update, right? Yeah, so there's a new firmware update for the C500 Mark II. And uh, what it does is it gives you more flavors of RAW, basically. Mm -hmm. It brings in the RAW ST, RAW LT, and RAW HQ, some of, it, some of which have been available on the R5C and the C70 previously. Yeah. And uh, it's different data rates uh, for RAW that give you all the benefits of RAW, but at some more workflow-friendly data rates. Right, right. Because, yeah, yeah the, the original ones on the C500 were like, it was just raw, right? It was just raw light. Well, it was cinema raw light, so it was still at one third to one fifth the file size of full raw. But these are even smaller file sizes and a little more workflow friendly data rates. And they're all they give you the ability to do 12 bit now at all the different frame rates uh, as well. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah, because the I remember one, the only true raw was the original C500, right? Right. With that big codex right. thingy on well, the back. Well, C700. C700 oh. did the true raw to the big codex on the back. Right. And then the first C500 um, also did some raw that you had to take out to, to external recorders. But right. the codex recorder was the C700. That was, gotcha. yeah. And then I remember the, for people who aren't aware, the a previous update that I was shocked to see, because I, I just updated it instinctively, was now autofocus works in slow-mo oh, on yes. the C500. <laughs> I was like, oh, wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. That was a bit of a misstep early That's on. Nice. But. Well, what's great also about the the RAW update is that it gives more people the ability to shoot RAW, which opens up more doors. Not only do you have the 12 bit, um, but you're getting you know a little more of the information straight from the sensor. Right. But there's also uh, what a lot of people don't talk about is if you're in the RAW 5.9K, you have some uh, anamorphic friendly uh, options you can go into in the sensor. Uh, it's not new with this firmware, but a lot of people don't know about it. Uh, yeah. You can actually change to uh six by five and uh oh. to some different sensor shapes that are better for using anamorphic lenses on there right so uh correct me if i'm wrong there is 1.3 1.5 and 2. those are anamorphic d squeezes for viewing yes but this is actually changing to a uh, more square oh. part of the sensor for shooting anamorphic and collecting the correct aspect ratio once you de-squeeze got it instead of using a 16 by 9 sensor it's full width and then you de-squeeze and it's like 2.55 to one. Yeah. <laughs> now you can have the correct aspect ratio to de-squeeze to 2.39. And, and, Wonderful. And, 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 yeah, because- And that's only available in the raw 5.9K. Gotcha. So now that we have these different flavors, more people will be able to use that at the different data rates. Yeah, I mean, I've said for a year, I, I, like I was saying earlier, like I own a C500, C70, and I basically launched my career on a C100 Mark II. Oh, nice, yeah. Uh, and that was some of the most gorgeous 1080, 4208 bit, oh my even God. to this day. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's a workhorse. It's it's people still amazing. I've been recommending like people who are starting. I'm like, just get that. It's like 800 bucks on eBay. <laughs> but the thing with the raw, even the thing that's nice on the C70 and now that I guess the C500 Mark II is that uh, those 12 that 12 bit really shows up in the grade. It is a big difference. Yeah, the 12 10 bit looks amazing, but bit depth is the uh, un unheralded hero of 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 all these different formats. Yeah. If you can get 12 bit, you have just so much more great, so many more gradations on the grayscale. Yeah. And it really matters if you have different shades. If you're out shooting a clear blue sky, the gradations of blue between high up in the atmosphere and yeah. closer to the land, there, there's so many gradations you can capture now with 12 bit uh, seamlessly as compared to 10 bit or especially 8 bit. Yeah. Back in the 8 bit days, you would get banding between different colors of blue. Yeah, I used to, I had a, what was it? Um, magic bullet looks. Yeah. And I would yeah. chuck that on the footage. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe we just do a little. <laughs> right. But uh, the other thing, too, I think we should mention just for people, just in case, <laughs> other companies will say, oh, we have 16 bit. That's 16 bit right. linear. Right. Which right. is basically 12 bit yeah. log. Right. Exactly right. Fundamentally. And honestly, once you get up to 12 bit, even 10 bit, you're not going to run into many problems. The 10 bit, it was really the 8 bit that yeah. we're glad to be done with. And, yeah. and now we're up in the 10 bit, 12 bit, 16 bit. Um, you're not going to run into many problems with any of those formats. I will say, this is just to 
I don't know if you who you're going to tell this to, <laughs> but on this so that we can upload it faster, I actually have the second card shooting to proxy, nice. which I used to do with the C500 is yeah. just not put the CF Express cards in yeah. and just shoot so I get that smaller file. Great. I would love to not have to put the first card in. It would be oh. great if I could just do that 8-bit. I know we just said 8-bit sucks, but for yeah. something like this where we're yeah. just shooting 709s going straight to the web. Absolutely. So maybe for a firmware update. I'll send that update. straight to the top. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, so those are the firmware updates. Is there anything else on the cinema side that uh, is coming out or new? Well, we are showing off our uh, RF cinema primes. Right. So it's basically our CNE primes that were EF. It's the same optics, it's the same focal lengths, same price. Mm. But now they have the RF uh, mount on them. And what you gain by that is the electronics, the communication with the camera body. So you have uh, distortion correction, that sort of thing that's now being communicated through the electronics uh, to the camera body. But otherwise, all the same high quality you'd expect from our EF lenses. Yeah, I, sh I shot an ad on the uh, Sumi rays. Sumi rays are spectacular. Yeah, those are, are they... our PL. They're a little different than our EF and RFs because they're designed to have a little different look when they're wide open. Right. A little more halation, a little different shape for the bokeh. Yeah. Yes, I said bokeh, not bokeh because it's bouquet. I'm, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I Googled it. So you know oh, it's true. Okay, perfect. Uh, the internet never lies. <laughs> I know. So, but anyway, so the Sumi rays, yeah, but if you close down the Sumi rays past like a four, then they're the same optics as the, uh, the EFs and the yeah, RFs. The cine -E's. So uh, those are the RF mount. That's great. And then was there a zoom lens? That was we have our RF 24 to 105 F2.8, which is sort of like the R5C is a hybrid between cinema and stills, mm -hmm. this zoom lens, this 24-105 f2.8, is sort of a hybrid zoom. So it's got an independent iris ring for the first time, which you can okay. unlock. Um, and it's also got a, an, a power zoom adapter that you can add to it. It doesn't come with the lens, but you can add it as a separate accessory. And you can either add it with an extra accessory port that you can bring out to zoom and focus demands, or you can just use a toggle that's built into the power zoom adapter so you can uh, power zoom on the side of the lens. So it's it's sort of a little brother to the old compact servos that we right. used to have, but it's full frame, it's RF mount, and it's uh, designed for stills, but sort of with one leg in the cinema video world. Sure, uh, yeah, and I yeah. That plenty of uses for that. And obviously the CNEs are uh, full frame. Yes, the CNEs yeah. are all full frame. Oh yeah, CNRs. CNE. Oh, they're called CNR? CNRs Wonderful. are all full frame. That makes, yeah. that, yeah, checks out. And of course, our flex zooms, which I'm in love with. I love our flex zooms, our cinema flex zooms. They've been rolling Swappable out for the mount, last right? two years. You can swap the mount. You can swap the optical relay. The rear optics of the lens can swap between Super 35 and uh, full frame. Wow. So we've got. We talked about that last year. Now that you're yeah. saying it, yeah, the, yeah, that's But they sick. just finished rolling out at the end of the year. So the last one that came out is my favorite lens Canon has ever made. Mm. It's a 31.5 to 95 Super 35 coverage. Mm. T17. That makes it the fastest cinema zoom lens in the history of cinema zooms. According to Jay Holbin, who does all this. That, Jay's yeah. my boy. Yeah. We're friends. We're actually friends. Yeah, He's yeah, amazing. Yeah. So he, yeah. So um, shout out Jay. Uh, He's around oh, yeah, somewhere. Of course he is. Yeah. <laughs> but he absolutely stunning performance. It's like hanging a whole set of primes on your camera. It's great for virtual shooting because you can basically hang our wider flex zoom on A camera and our longer flex zoom on B camera, and you have the equivalent performance of a whole set of primes on both cameras, never have to change your lenses for a whole day of shooting on LED volumes, right. no need to recalibrate between focal lengths uh, because it's just the same lenses hanging on the cameras. Very little focus breathing, almost non-existence focus breathing, real prime performance. You're gonna have to get me one of those for review Absolutely. for pro video. because 31.5 uh, to 95 is hanging on a C300 over here and it's yeah. just literally my favorite lens Canon ever made. I'm gonna get him on frame and reference <laughs> and also I'm gonna email, I'm not kidding, I'm gonna email you okay. because that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, anything else we missed? Is that um, That's uh, pretty much all that we we're showing off here. We're also showing a camera to cloud solution with Teradex, oh. so you can send footage, even 4K raw footage up to the cloud. Um, uh, we can't do it oh. here at NAB because there's so much crazy. Trust me, last on. year, I oh, I felt so bad. We were, yeah, uh, yeah that's another story. We had it working pretty well at Sundance, but uh, here at NAB, there's this, all This are place off. is a Faraday cave. <laughs> so brutal, yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, with Teradex, we've got some great camera cool. to cloud solutions. Well, I think we're talking to them tomorrow or something. Fantastic. So we'll, we'll check that out. Yeah. But um, thanks so much for having hey, me. Hey, it is Very my pleasure, exciting. yeah. Uh, oh, wait, wait, Joey, questions. Any? Uh, I don't know, we covered the R24, R25, anything on the R5 line? On the R5, R5 line, line. Uh, no. 
Nope. Nothing there. Nothing. Good. <laughs>